Hello and welcome to this video series all about Kubernetes. So before we begin, it would be useful to have a basic understanding of containers, um, having said that. So what is container orchestration and what problems does it help you solve? So it's quite a broad term, but the main aspects are it helps you with the startup and termination of containers, as well as making sure that they run correctly um, that they're not producing any errors. Um, they also help you with the placement of the containers on the nodes. So that is where the actual containers run. In, in what way are they placed? So are they grouped together? Are they spread across as many nodes as possible? Um, then it's you also have the volumes involved, so the shared files or directories or things like NFS mounts. Um, and then lastly, we have the networking between the containers as well as the networking to the containers. So what is Kubernetes? Kubernetes is a container orchestration system. It's an open source project. It was released in 2014 by Google. Um, it is configured declaratively, so that means you you tell Kubernetes what to do, but not necessarily how to do it. Um, and and then it also is qu quite often shortened to K8S, probably because it's easier to type. Um, and then lastly, um, I remember when I first got started in Kubernetes. It seemed like quite a magical thing, um, to, but it actually isn't. It's just ordinary containers that runs on ordinary hardware. So you don't need a, a quantum computer to run it. So what are the main aspects of Kubernetes? So to begin with, we start off with the nodes. So this is the actual hardware or virtual machines that your containers run in as well as Kubernetes runs in. So we have the master node. So this is usually a single node. And this refers to a collection of processes involved in managing the cluster state. So the things behind the scenes that run your containers. And then we have the minions. So these are the nodes that run all the user containers, I guess, or application containers. So things like web servers and your actual applications. And then behind the scenes, we have ETCD, which is used to communicate the cluster configuration between the nodes. Um, this is not something you have any direct interaction with, but it's just some possibly useful information. Okay, so the way in which you interact with Kubernetes is through the API or through the command line uh, command uh, or utility kubectl. Um, so the master, the master node, as we described previously, is on the receiving end of the K Kubernetes API, um, and then also kubectl just uses the Kubernetes API behind the scenes as well. Um, so so commands we could run, for example, would be we could get the number of we could get, get the pods, which is a list of pods that ru that are running or have errors or whatever. Uh, we can edit a specific pod or we could delete a specific pod. And it basically follows that that format. Um, so then we have the actual pods. So this is a group of one or more containers. Um, so you could have like a database container, a, a web server container, and that would could be defined as a pod. So a pod always gets deployed as a whole unit on a node. So two contain if you have two containers in a pod, in a pod those will always be running on a on the same node um, and then we have 
the containers within a pod share the same IP and port space. Um, and then we also have some additional uh, diagnostic metadata available for a pod. So whether it started correctly, if it stopped, what sort of errors it has. Um, and then also worth mentioning is C Kubernetes runs uh, some some internal pods. Uh, so that is that is involved with things like uh, the logging, the networking, and collecting collecting the hardware resources. So things like CPU usage. Um, right. So moving on to pods. So how do you actually get these pods deployed? Well, that is done via deployments. So a deployment basically contains a pod. Um, it has additional metadata, so labels. Um, it also has a replica account attached to it, so how many sets of pods to be run. Um, and then also you have a... So one, once you have a deployment defined, um, then you can actually tell Kubernetes to spin up a deployment. Um, and then you have the rollouts. Uh, so this describes the actual process of terminating old, uh, terminating old pods and spinning up a new set of pods. Uh, so this could be like a, let's say you have a new version of your application. Um, and then also worth mentioning is Kubernetes can do a rolling de deployment so that means if you have a new application so a new um, a new application version sorry and you want to sp spin you want to deploy the new latest version so then you can gradually terminate the old the old pods and gradually um, start up the new pods um, so it's so and if there's any errors uh, so what this allows you to do is if there are any issues with the new, with the new application version um, it, it it won't continue deploying um, and potentially taking your service down um, and the, and there is various ways to configure um, the way in which it does the rollout, so the r rolling deployment. Right, so in terms of, um, so, so we just covered deployments, but sometimes you want to run with deployments, maybe if we just go back to the slide. So. So with deployments, um, let's say you have a set of three nodes um, and you want to deploy a set of, you want to deploy a set of uh, three pods. So then Kubernetes will deploy those three prods, pods, sorry, across the nodes wherever there is sufficient um, hardware capacity for them. Um, so, so, so more than one pod can be uh, scheduled to run on a node. So sometimes you don't necessarily want to run multiple pods on a node, or you want m a bit more control over the way pods are scheduled on nodes. So we have a concept called daemon sets. So it's similar to deployments but it allows you to define a pod to run per node. So you, so rather than uh, like, there might be no use having, um, mul there might be no use having running three web servers on a single node. Um, so that's something you can do with daemon sets. So you could run a, three replica deployment, sorry, a three replica pod um, across three nodes and each node will run one pod. Okay.
So then we have the volumes. So this is the actual shared. Um, sh the, this is the actual mountings of of a data volume or a NFS share or AW, AWS Elastic uh, block storage, and there's a whole a whole list of various other bindings. Um, so yeah, not too much to cover there. So then we have stateful sets. This is an area I haven't had much experience with, but essentially uh, it's similar to deployments, um, but the pods uh, the pods have an attached identity. Um, so each pod uh, gets a unique network identifier, so something like a, essentially a host name. Um, and then where 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 normal pods are where normal deployments are stateless um with stateful sets you can actually persist um data relating to a pod um between a pod terminating and starting up so if you have an application that you'd like to run, usually there is some values that you need to configure for it. So these are things like database credentials, API keys, um, yeah. So essentially what secrets are, it's similar to environment variables, but it is, um, it is, it's basically in the name. So it's used to store sensitive, potentially sensitive uh, data, so things like passwords, user, usernames, um, so it's kind of like an environment variable, but you don't actually define it literally, you, you just have a pointer to it. Um, so, so instead of referencing the actual password as, you know, ABCXYZ, you, you reference a password secret. Um, so yeah, so it so these secrets can also be mounted as files, and uh, but they can also be used as ordinary environment variables. Um, and yeah, I guess that basically covers it. So services. So services are mostly mostly networking related. Um, there are various types of uh, services. The two most common, I would say, are node ports and load balancers. So the node port, for example, uh, well, let, let me first define what a service is. So a service is kind of like a proxy in a way. Um, so essentially it allows you to have an endpoint and it also allows you to target um, a set of pods. So you could have a web service service, a web service, sorry, <laughs> a, a web service that targets um, pods which are, which have Nginx or Apache. Um, so th this is controlled by uh, selectors which in turn rely on the labels of the pods and containers. Um, so, so yes, so, so you could have a, a web service that could be accessible from a host name like, uh, web service one or web service two, for example. Um, so I've covered that. Um, yeah, so it can, and the way it is shared with the actual containers is through either DNS, which is the most common, or also environment variables. Uh, so you could share the actual IP address in a environment variable. Um, but if not, you would just send a request to um, web service XYZ and it would route to one of the um, one of the pods. So then we have placement. So this is to do with, we briefly mentioned it in the beginning. Uh, this is to do with uh, actually where to schedule 
uh, pods and in what way. So we have pod affinity, so you can you can um, you can specify to place a pod um, only where it is running on the same node as another pod. So you need a um, let's say a an application to also run with a database or a Redis cache. Um, and then you have uh, node taints uh, and as well as node affinities and this is to do with um, so if you have a for example you have a specific node in your cluster which has a large amount of RAM that you want a specific pod to run on um, then you can specify a node taint so only those sets of pods will be scheduled on that particular node. Um, so yes, so we covered that. Um, then we have logs. So basic logging is available by default. So it would, these are the logs coming from your containers. Um, so if you have um, a pod, if you have a pod um, and you spin it up, um, you, you are able to view the logs. Um, yeah, I guess that's fairly straightforward. Um, and that's basically it.